Well, there are men at work down under. Oh, hang on, that's the wrong joke. Well, I've just got to Sapan Taxin to get the boat up the river and it's normally quite peaceful and calm around here but there's a fight going on just over there and I think they're fighting over the last place on the free shuttle boat over to Icon Siam. So welcome to the Bangkok River tour video part one and what I'm doing is taking this boat up to Khao San Road, prior tip pier I should say, and then going to take the boat back down the river and that's when we're going to stop off along the way. Well it's a hot day today and I would advise bringing a nice cold drink and an umbrella which I have neither but I do have my sunblock on. If you're familiar with the boat service on the Chao Pia River, you'll know that Prata Tit is where you get off if you want to go to Khao San Road. And I thought, as we're in the area, let's have a quick look around. As I'm in Soy Rambutri, I thought I would give a big shout out to this bookshop just over there, through thick and thin, through the lockdowns, when everywhere else was closed, it remained open. So if you want second-hand books, in particular, second-hand Lonely Planet guides, they got loads of them, come and check this place out. This is a who's who of some of the more intelligent residents that have stayed in Kalsam Road over the years. I recognise that one. I notice McDonald's hasn't reopened. That's a good sign. Or maybe that is what's keeping the modern day backpackers away. Well, the Buddy Beer Bar has been here for decades and I've noticed it's now a wine bar and a grill. And those hippies from the old days must be turning in their graves. You used to be able to get everything around here. Second-hand degrees, fake toilet paper, or is that the other way around? Anyway, it's good to see it's busy again. And Khao San Road reopened in October to a mainly young Thai trendy crowd back then. And as a result, music became about 50 times louder than I ever remember it. So if you do come here in the evening, bring some earplugs. Anyway, let's get back on the boat, enough waffling. I want to make our first proper port of call, and that is Tombury Old Railway Station and Sirirat Hospital, and I'm going to change my shirt.
Our first stop is right here in Chalern Prakhi at 72 Park. This sits in the grounds of Sirurat Hospital. Anyway, the reason why I'm here is because I wanted to visit the old Tombury railway station whose building and clock tower has been nicely restored and it's just over here. So I'll give you a quick bit of info on Tombury railway station. It was built in 1903, the original terminus for Southern Line trains and it saw its last train in 1999. Not long after closure, the tracks and the platforms were demolished to make way for another medical facility here at Sirurat Hospital. And it was within this medical facility that I had a nose job operation in 2003. Don't worry, it wasn't for cosmetic or vanity reasons. I actually had a genuine injury. This is where the Klong Bangkok Noi Canal flows into the river. And if you ever take one of those canal boat trips into Tombury, this is the way you'll come. And you'll see lots of old canal communities that have remained pretty much untouched over the years. And it's a great trip, highly recommended. Anyway, we're gonna take a trip back along the river now, across to Ta Chang Pier, which is the gateway to the old city. Ta Chang Pier is connected to the Grand Palace, to the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, Wat Prakal, Wat Po, Sanam Luang, the National Museum, the Museum of Siam, the Ministry of Defence Building. I could go on and on, but this is the place to come if you want to see the historical part of the old city. What I'm going to do is have a quick walk round and then we're going to take a ferry across the river to Wat Arun. This is Wat Arun, Temple of Dawn, and it's a very strikingly unique structure, as you can see. It's visible both day and night. It's very nicely lit up. Anyway, its origins are largely unknown as to when it was established in this spot. Many say it was the Ayutthaya period, and there are historic references to it as far back as 1656. During the reign of King Taksin, when Tombury was the capital city, this was in the grounds of the original royal palace, and it was King Rama I who moved the royal palace and the Emerald Buddha, which was originally here, across to what became Wat Prakal and the Grand Palace. Well, this is one of the more striking structures across the river, Memorial Bridge, also known as Sapan Put, and its history goes back 90 years. It was 1932 when it was unveiled by King Rama VII. It was built by a British company, Dorman Long, who came from Middlesbrough, and they signed the contract in 1929 and had it finished just three years later using some pretty revolutionary construction techniques for the time. Once upon a time, Memorial Bridge used to open up to let ships pass through, but that hasn't happened since 1984, I believe. Anyway, across here is Pra Poklau Bridge, and this is where the famous Sky Park is. And what I want to do is try and get across to the Sky Park and get a shot of the Memorial Bridge with the sunset behind it.
One thing guaranteed around this flower market is that you'll never ever smell someone with bad body odour. The whole air is tinged with a floral sweet smell and it's really nice. Even the street food around here smells like street food mixed with flowers. Anyway, if you've got smelly vision, you'll know exactly what I mean. If you're watching this 30 years in the future, maybe you have got it and you will know exactly what I mean. Anyway, enough chat. I've been asked to recommend a Riverside bar. And to be honest, I haven't been to that many, but one does spring to mind that I have been to, and it's in Bang Rack, which is about a couple of kilometers away. It's a place called Jack's Bar. Well, we've just passed under Memorial Bridge, Sapan Put, and Krapo Klau Bridge. We're heading for the next stop, which is Ratchawong Pier. Chinatown and Pahorat, Little India, are both within walking distance of Ratchawong Pier, as is Talad Noi, a quieter part of Chinatown, famous for architecture, street art history, alleyways, and it has, how can I say, a mechanical connection as well. I thought I'd stop off here in Tel Adnoy. I'm in an area called Trok San Chao Rong Guok, and this is a very trendy part of Tel Adnoy, famous for street art. And Instagrammers come here by the busload to take selfies. Anyway, they're painting a mural actually as we speak at the moment. But this particular part of Tel Adnoy is famous for riverside hotels at a very reasonable cost. And if I ever recommend a place where you can get a bit adventurous, wander around the alleyways, lots of coffee shops, lots of street food around here, then Tel Adnoy should be top of your list for a really nice, cheap riverside hotel. So we've made it across the river. I'm heading to an island that not many people know about and the journey is quite treacherous. So I won't give you any details just yet. I've got to get there first. I get a funny feeling not many people come here. Access to the bridge is through an abandoned building. So let's see how far I make it. Well, I must say the humidity here is about 110%. It is incredibly hot and I'm sweating like a pig and I haven't even moved that much. I'll give you a tip, by the way. Don't put your hand on the railing because there's a two-way procession of very large ants. We're gonna take this boardwalk through the jungle to get where we gotta to get to. Well, there are men at work down under. Oh, hang on, that's the wrong joke. What I meant to say was, you never know what is lurking under the boardwalk. I've just seen the drifters beating the crap out of Bruce Willis. And if you know your music, you know exactly what I mean.
I think the tourist authority of Thailand should be encouraging tourists to visit places like this more than the glossy shopping malls because it was from here that in 1893 the Royal Thai Navy attempted to fight off two French Navy gunships that were trying to get up the Chao Phraya River into Bangkok. I'll tell you a bit more about the story but first let's go and have a look at the guns. During the 19th century, the French were trying their hardest to colonise Siam and in 1893 they announced that they were going to send two Navy gunships from Saigon to Bangkok. Siamese government were naturally not happy about this and they said, no, you can't do that. That goes against a treaty that we signed back in 1856. However, ignoring that, the French gunships arrived at the mouth of the Chao Phraya River on the 13th of July, 1893. So the French Navy made their way up the Chao Phraya River towards Fort Chulamong Gao, which is about five kilometres downstream from here. There they came under fire from the Siamese Navy. One of their ships was hit and grounded in the mud. Anyway, two boats made it up the river, past here where they came under more fire, and they ended up mooring themselves outside the French Embassy with their guns pointing towards the Grand Palace. They also blockaded trade routes in and out of the city along the river. Anyway, it was the British whose trade routes were affected the most and they came up with a settlement between Siam and France and all this became known as the Patnam Incident. Now, I've only explained it pretty briefly, but Wikipedia will give you all the details that you need. Well, it's been an interesting couple of hours here and I better get out of here because the tide will come in and you won't be able to get on the pier to get the ferry back to Patnam. Well, believe me, I didn't come to the Icon Siam to tell you how great it was. I've been here two minutes and it's driving me absolutely mad. I preferred what was on the land here before it many years ago. The reason why I came here is because there's a pier opposite the Oriental Hotel and I was hoping to stand on that pier and tell you the history of that great hotel, but that pier is closed. So what I'll do is direct you to a link in the description to a video I did on the hotel's comprehensive history. Well, this is the part of the video where I think it's the perfect time to show you all the shots I have done of the sunset up and down the river over the last couple of days. One thing you'll see a lot of in the evenings up and down the river are dinner cruise boats and I did a bit of inquiring. I wanted to find out how much they were 
and what you get for your money because I've never been on one. i would heard stories about them being overpriced or being a scam to rip off tourists so I wanted to find out for myself. Anyway, I was pleasantly surprised because some of them are as little as $6.99 per person and for that you get an unlimited buffet, you get four hours cruising up and down the river plus you get a band or a DJ. I've heard some questionable music as well coming from some of these boats over the last couple of nights. I've heard Led Zeppelin, Stairway to Heaven, I've heard Hotel California, I heard a great version of Another Brick in the Wall, plus I heard a DJ the other night playing Van McCoy, The Hustle, and I've got to give a big respect to that DJ because that is an absolute classic. I've also heard a few howlers as well. Anyway, the other night I was on Memorial Bridge and I had a great view looking down onto one of the boats and there was a fantastic, very convincing Elvis impersonator. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this trip up and down the river. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you want to like, share, comment, send me an email if you've got any questions. If you want to donate and support the channel, you can do via the Buy Me A Coffee link down below, or you can join the channel and become a member. That just leaves me to say thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you soon.